The following lesson is linked to learning outcome 3, writing and presenting. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate planning skills for writing for a specific purpose, audience and contexts. It also requires learners to explain the requirements of a familiar range of tasks. Learners should be able to decide on and apply the appropriate style, point of view and format of texts. They should also be able to research topics from familiar sources and record their findings. Hello. We've been busy looking at different types of summaries and have learned today how to create point form and selective summaries. Now, it's easy to see how summaries are useful in the classroom, but actually they're quite useful in our day-to-day -day lives as well. In fact, we often summarize things without thinking about it. If we had to relate a story or an incident to a friend, we would select out only the most important details and leave out the rest of it. We have emphasized how important it is to understand the passage which you need to summarize. If you don't understand it, you will battle to write an effective summary. Take time to read the passage carefully and think about it before you pick up your pen. This also applies to taking notes. It's very difficult to take notes when you don't understand what is going on. If you can't follow what someone is saying, ask him or her to repeat what they have just said or to explain it to you. Note taking is a very similar skill to point form summarizing and it's something that you will use throughout your life when you attend meetings or lectures. If, for example, you had to attend a meeting of a society at school, you would have to use the skills you learned in point form summarizing. When you move on to tertiary studies, you will find that you're not given notes. You will be expected to compile your own notes while the lecturer talks away. Why should you take notes at meetings and lectures? It's extremely difficult to remember everything that was said at a meeting or a lecture. We need to take notes so that we can have a record to refer to in the future. When the information is supplied in a verbal form, we need to be able to summarize it so that we can write it down. Now, if you were taking notes of what I've just said, you could have summarized it in the following way. Notes serve as a memory aid, record of discussion points, and as a list of important details. If you're able to record notes such as these, later on when you've forgotten what the lecturer said or what the meeting was about, you will have something to refer to. Note-taking may sound impossible at first, but with practice it's a skill which you will get used to. Let me give you another example now of a situation in which you might be required to write notes. Pretend that you are asked to attend a Learners' Representative Council meeting. You have to report to your year group all the details of the issues discussed at the meeting. In a situation like this, what could you do to ensure that the information you supply is correct and that you haven't left out any important points? The only accurate way we have of recording information is to write it down as it is discussed. Write down the venue, date and purpose of the meeting. Make a note of the people attending the meeting so that if you have any queries in the future you can check the details with other people who were there. Lastly, jot down each point that is raised during the meeting and the decisions made by the group. Can you see that if you list the information like this, 
you will be creating a point form summary. What information will you leave out of it? You would leave out any diversions from the topic and any unnecessary details. For example, if someone told a joke during the meeting, you would leave that out. If you stick to only the important details and the key points, you will find that you have got an accurate record of the essence of the meeting. It's essential that you write down the information in your own words so that you can understand and interpret what was discussed at the meeting. Also, if you try to write down the exact words that people say, you will not be able to keep up. People talk far faster than most people can write. It's always a good idea to look over your notes when you get home from the meeting to check that you have provided enough written detail so that you will not have to rely on your memory over a long period. It's often easy to remember the details of a meeting immediately after it has happened, but a few weeks later your notes may be puzzling to you. Summaries and notes should always be stated in clear, simple language. Just as meeting notes can sound like point form summaries, sometimes they will sound like selective summaries. For example, if you're having a meeting for the team that you're in at school and the coach spends a lot of time talking about responsibilities of the captain, if you're not the captain, that information would not be relevant to you. Remember, Summarizing is a skill and you'll get better at it with practice. The best way to check if your summary of a meeting is effective is to ask someone who was not there to read through it. If they understand what the content of the meeting was, then you wrote a good summary. Well, that's everything for today. See you next time.